What up my freaks, Rowena Sensite here with part 27 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Archeon the Ever Chosen campaign. So as we saw last time, it was another day of Gulator action as Gulator have finally hunted down Azag the Slaughterer around Weissman. Dan has started taking his territories over quite quickly, I might add. His territories will probably fall uh, fairly quickly now. I think he only has the one army around here remaining, so most of them will be undefended and tis only the auto resolve that could potentially screw us. Uh, Archeon has also finally crossed the northern world's edge mountains granted it's taken him a little bit of time to get all the way over here but uh, well it had to be done and besides Archeon wandered through the chaos wastes for centuries in probably what is to be a, a considered a fairly circuitous route so it's only appropriate that he uh, uh, he does so here as well anyway having crossed the mountains in two turns we will be able to redeclare war on the ice court of Kislev which will be brought down and by Archeon himself and will probably move briefly up to Prague uh, to take a few territories from uh, Mr. Uh, Thragi before heading through the Empire of Undeath and sort of beelining towards Altdorf I guess we just need a few more armies to be able to hit the uh, uh, hit Vlad's Empire at the same time so they aren't drawn out back through the northern Wall's Edge Mountains plus at the same time the endgame will probably activate so we'll have to pay attention to that. On top of all that, we did get profit up and running, so we got a pretty darn strong faction-wide buff for us for the next 19 turns. I'm pretty happy and we'll make good use of it. Anyway... What do we got to do this turn? Kolek, I do believe you need to move. You are heading all the way to Lustria, so you'll be traveling for quite the while yet. And Kuhar, you're kind of in the same position. In fact, you're in the exact same position. Uh, we're going to send you down to the elves first, and then we'll see. Somebody does need to hit the southern chaos wastes ASAP. And there are Slaneshi to fight down there, and, uh, well, Cornates do like killing Slaneshi, so, you know, I'm sure Kukar will enjoy. Uh, plus, we'd be able to pit the fast-moving army of the Blood God versus uh, the fast-moving armies of the Prince of Pleasure. And maybe, well, I'm pretty sure Big Bird is dead, but who knows? We'll see. Anyway, uh, Jaeger, you got to keep moving. Let's have you take the Shrine of Ladriel, and in fact, speaking of taking territories, uh, between the episodes... I went ahead and fought a few little tiny battles, like this, with a few of our armies that I didn't want to uh, work coordination target lost. Yeah, useless, useless work coordination targets. Uh, fought a few battles with a few lords that were inconsequential, but I also didn't want to auto-resolve just so that we didn't uh, waste too much of our time. So, yeah with uh, waiting for them to re-recruit. So we're good there, and we won't be having to waste our time with at least for this turns, uh, this episode. Hello. I didn't see you there, King and Lashen. You are foolishly in March Dance. You have made a terrible mistake, sir. <laughs> All right, well, at least we know what we're doing now. Valkyrie, looks like you've got a fight on your hands, and I hear you like that sort of thing. So, let's head you to King Anlashen instead of... Ooh, I don't see Kotep, but I do see another army there, so it looks like plenty of fights in Valkyrie's future, which she can appreciate. Once again, we're facing off against several Sepulchral Stalkers, though Necropolis Knight's not present uh, this time, so shouldn't be nearly as concerning as it was before. Uh, before we get started, though, we did reach the engagement threshold once again, and so this episode will continue the hour-long streak, and the streak has been pretty darn decent. I don't remember how many episodes Lewin's, uh, Lewin's record was, but it was for his entire campaign, so it's pretty easy to check. But we gotta be closing in on it, right? It can't have been more than 35, right? Hmm. I'll double check, but anyway, uh, going strong still, folks, so if you've been enjoying this content, etc, etc, and want to see it maintain that hour-long streak, uh, 300 likes and 50 comments, and it will continue. Anyway, uh, let's see a Valkia fight against this army. Should be no problem, as we are not hurt in terms of our vigor, and the enemy very much is. Snuff out the flame of their existence! 
sighed through them as if they were mere blades of grass. All right, Valkyrie will do, will do. Here we go, and we've got a choke point battle on our hands. I'm pretty darn happy with that, actually. I was certainly not expecting a choke point fight. Interestingly, the enemy has deployed a lot of infantry unsupported by the uh, monstrous units on the right side of their particular army, whereas the left side has pretty much all their sepulchral stalkers, a lot of their horsemen, their uh, tomb king as well. Kind of interesting why the AI deployed it like that now to be fair we did deploy more of our units on the right side so it does make sense that the enemy deployed more monsters on this side but interesting that they didn't intersperse at least some of them uh, to the other side as well anyway Valky as always will be first in so she's gonna head directly towards the uh, enemy tomb king and with the Cameron war sphinx to call upon as his mount this should be a fairly decent contest between the two Alrighty, I suppose it does depend on how much help the enemy Tomb King calls for, but uh, as we've already seen, Valkyrie has pretty crazy stats and is a fantastic duelist, so uh, she should have this in the bag. In fact, it looks like the enemy Tomb King has already lost about half of his HP, while Valkyrie has lost none at all. I guess he's having a little bit of a tough time breaking through that 72 melee defense when he has a mere 41 melee attack on the uh, War Sphinx. Problem with the War Sphinx? is that it's uh, sort of supposed to bound through ranks of infantry and deal with those and thus has a melee attack that's relatively low. Anyway, Valkyrie activates her demon shield and it looks like the rest of our forces are moving in. The Knights of the Brazen Throne, as usual, will lead the charge, heading directly towards the first enemy unit of Sepulchral Stalkers, who have taken about half of their HP in damage to the charge. We are locked in melee for a little bit and we're gonna keep them here, though they should escape relatively easily, at least until the rest of the army engages in combat. One of our units of Marauders will activate Sacrifice, buffing everybody up and popping the Knights of the Brazen Thrones and melee attack up to 100. Velkia has in the meantime brought down the enemy lord, but he was already pretty much done, as we saw, and is now apparently surrounded by piles of enemy... Uh, uh, piles of enemy Nehekara horsemen who are no threat to her, but they at the same time have enough mass uh, to sort of keep her pinned in place, which is actually probably accidental on the part of the AI, but it isn't a bad move. Uh, keeping her locked down, fighting a, a at least single unit of Nehekara horsemen, which she's probably going to have a very difficult time getting out of because they're not infantry, regardless of her uh, fly-away ability. A lift-off ability, that's it. So yeah, not bad AI, and not bad. Minus the loss of your lord, probably should have tried that uh, before he got absolutely ripped apart, but anyway. Uh, the second choke point is having a pretty bad day. We have uh, moved all of our infantry in, and the enemy infantry will obviously lose two hours, as they are primarily of the skeleton warrior variety. Not even tomb guard to hold the line for decent amounts of time. A hole was also opened in the middle of the enemy line, or on the side, or in the flank of this flank, and this allowed all of our Marauder horsemen to move in. Now they can now menace the enemy back lines, charge the enemy chariots, charge the enemy archers, etc, etc, and make sure that neither of the two add too much to the rest of the battle. Alright, we continue- wait. Ow! The Tomb King is alive, I just missed him. Okay, never mind. <laughs> uh, but he won't be alive for much longer because Valkyrie took most of his HP and there he goes, at least this way. We didn't miss his death animation. All right, I don't know how I missed that one. Oh, right, ooh, uh, we had the Spear of Sloughpnir activate. Yes, I just remembered as to uh, what the deal was. And basically, Valkyrie got almost all of his HP, and then he sent in the horseman, and then ran away towards our line, which is probably the smart move, uh, in fact, as he would have done a lot more damage to the piles of Marauders and Chaos Warriors uh, than he ever could have to Valkyrie. And now uh, it's just a matter of destroying the rest of these units. We keep popping sacrifice on our uh, marauders, continuously buffing up uh, the melee attacks for everybody around them. But nice to have the ability, and it does last uh, decently long as well. Of course, it does also hurt our units, but actually really not that much. Or at least not so much that uh, we would care about it at all. 
All right, now the enemy is starting to run out of those sepulchral stalkers, though I uh, rarely, if ever, grow tired of uh, watching them fight. I do love the unit as well. And so I enjoy fighting them as well as uh, using them myself, though it looks like we won't be seeing much of either uh, much longer this particular battle. The enemy backline is completely overrun by the Marauder Horsemen. We're just keeping them in mind and not even bothering and uh, doing anything fancy with running them around and chasing things down as the battle is pretty much ours and we just gotta grind our way through the rest of the enemy skeletons. Chariots and skeletons, and no more spoke of stalkers as it looks like the rest of the snakes will fall. And the battle is ours. It, 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 it's not desynced, I just said that earlier than I should have. <laughs> uh, yeah, alright, alright. I get the, get the rest of those chariots gone, I'm very good. I hope. Alrighty, now we're good, right? Oh, actually, no, we're not good. The uh, the enemy is the third level realm of souls and decided to summon a bunch of Ushabti at the back of our line. This is completely irrelevant, and we don't really care about the uh, garrison forces, but uh, a couple more shots of the Ushabti fighting, which is uh, generally fairly entertaining as well. And Valkyrie can hunt a few of them down. There we go, bringing the last with a few more hits from her spear. And now the battle is ours. All right, very nice indeed. Could have used a little bit more post-battle loot, but, uh, well, you know, what can you do? Uh, Valkyrie is certainly showing the enemy Tomb King, whose boss is absolutely zero problems knocking him out, and uh, the Camrian War Sphinx, while taking very little damage herself and still dishing out 41k as well. The Spear of Slopnir ability is, uh, seems to be improved in SFO. I remember being kind of mad about it back in vanilla, but it uh, does seem to... Uh, kill decent amounts of units now so and not too bad at all otherwise once again we got the highest damage on the knights of the brazen throne which as well and we should and okay damage on the various marauders and such though i guess they weren't the mvps this time around huh interestingly the regular chaos trolls out damage the armored chaos trolls but it does depend on who entered the battle against what etc etc so hard to say anyway we'll sacrifice those kids and how far can we move out of this? Ah, I was hoping we could start raiding this territory, but alas, we cannot. Path to Glory unlocked for Lothar Blood Reaper, and a student for him as well. And a, a third other trickster shards. The one I think is on Archeon's army and one's in Village's army. I will have to think about where to put uh, the last one. And Valkia, I would like you to go into actually not raiding stance. Just stay right here. You're going to heal to full anyway. I did decide to get another exalted hero up. And this one does have some decent traits. Eldritch Aura and Revel and Slaughter. The uh, Missile Resistance in particular. And to some degree the Spell Resistance would be quite valuable. But what I really wanted Colonics was a Vigor Loss Reduction for Chosen. Neither one of these guys has that trait. And I'm tempted to look again. Maybe at the cost of Lothar Blood Reaper. In order to... Uh, in order to try to acquire it. It's a pretty big buff. In fact, if we could get 100% Vigor Loss Reduction for Chosen, it would be ideal here, but uh, and there's obviously no guarantee. And I don't know to what degree we can uh, keep getting these guys in here. We're going to run out of capacity sooner or later. It would be really nice to get, like, I don't know, a bunch more capacity. Actually, I think the Long Victory objective, for which we are only missing... Uh, what are we missing here? Achieve the short victory con- Oh, we actually have the long victory condition, but we don't have the short. What was the- what are we missing for the short? Oh, destroy the ice court. All right, within the next few turns, this should give us at least one more hero capacity. The sorcerer capacity doesn't matter as much right now, because we have a bunch of extra sorcerer slots, and we'll probably uh, put them in various armies, but it's the exalted heroes that we like, mostly because I've been building the sorcerer buildings rather than those, but anyway. Anyway, who still needs to move? Malefex Rune Smasher. You are going through Cathay. Let's grab a few islands on the way, and that'll help 
hopefully allow you to level up while you do so. Uh, you got levels? Oh, Root Marcher, Dominating Presence, Miasma of Pestilence, and... Still gonna go for Children of Nurgle. We already have a base form of uh, Stream of Corruption, so it doesn't really matter. What else do you have, by the way? Rotten and Gallant. That's an interesting combination. Melee attack and melee defense plus 10 plus 10. That's actually quite strong. Damn. I would have loved that tr to keep that trait once you ascend to demonhood, but uh, nonetheless. I think in terms of aesthetics, I like the uh, Nurgle heroes uh, the most, just because of the way their antlers look, and that they had, tend to have asymmetry. Funnily enough, Malefex uh, doesn't, but uh, yeah, these guys. I like the asymmetrical horns quite a bit. And I know I've talked about it before, I just feel like Chaos uh, should have a little bit more in the way of asymmetry for its units, not the mm, nearly perfectly symmetrical uh, and stuff that they've got going on for some of them. Just doesn't seem chaotic enough for my taste. Anyway, Malefex, just quickly, let's get your heroes up and running as well. Uh, I don't really care about Plague Father's protection. Yeah, but nonetheless, it'll help with the auto resolve, so. How much remains to be a saint. Uh, scouting on you, we should also get you into Pink Fires and then into Fires of Change. All right after that, let's go to the island. Hopefully, we can still heal while in uh, friendly waters. Sail to the wreck, auto resolve it real quick. I doubt that we'll find something like materials at sea, but, uh, well. Alright, let me guess, it's 8,000 gold? Oh no, it's lost cargo. Nah, uh, it's not bad. It's not materials at sea, but I'll certainly take the 30 growth and the income from buildings. I like it. And the Shrieking Blade can be turned into something hopefully a little bit more useful. Now, you are moving southward to the next island, though you certainly took quite a bit of damage there. My land and bait shy here. It's a little bit odd that... Oh, this counts as neutral water. Oh, interesting. Why does it count as neutral water? Is it because we... Uh, neutral. The Jade Sea is... Neutral. Isn't this all water that should be owned by our ally? Hmm. Odd that no replenishment is available. I'm just out of curiosity. What about here? Yeah, it just says neutral on everything. I've never actually moused over water before, but I do know that sometimes you can heal in friendly waters. I guess it's not super important. That guy's not in a hurry anyway. Alright, chant and chant. Uh... Why are you both named Chan? <laughs> uh, I actually like that they're both named Chan because they're both going to be ascended to demonhood and thus call it a chant, a summoning, a ritual, and they don't thus need names, at least not right now. Uh, what we do need, however, is to figure out who we're sending where. Oh, I do have a Lord of Change and a Cockatrice available for you and your flyers, which is nice. And this is going to be primarily Zinchin Flyer, since, since it'll be a Doom Knight-focused army. Uh, go through Pig Barter. I think maybe we'll actually send you up the canal, the Uskalak Canal, and move you to help out a little bit with uh, Throggy's territories. He does have a lot of them, and I don't want to waste Archeon's time with just auto-resolving repeatedly, so we could have this guy get some XP on his horsemen while doing that. Just make sure that he uh, grabs a few additional horsemen from a few other territories. A chant. You do not yet have the ability to get soul grinders, but you very well soon will. Uh, you don't need to recruit anything else, though I suppose if you really wanted to, you could pick up a few additional... Um, a few additional spawn just to take the place of the soul grinders until you have them. Which ain't the worst idea in the world, so we'll do one. I mean, uh, the spawn are actually cheaper than Forsaken are, so why not, right? Uh, and then since we're sending you down here, I guess we can set sail somewhere around Bitter Bay. May even make a stop in Nagash's or just to vassalize them. Anyway, move like this. You'll suffer a little bit in the ways of attrition, but oh well. You both got places to be. New armies gotta get to fighting. Uh, there we go. Alright, who else still needs to move? Demahar Crow Brother. You do not need to move as yet. It'll still probably be something of a while until you do. Next up we get the new ticks, and it's the virulent blessings that we want. And... Bloom of Decay. You will be briefly switched to... Grotesque Mechanisms. Get the first of the Soul Grinders of Nurgle up and running. 
And Death's Bounty, we will briefly switch you towards... Ooh, Fists of Corn. Yes, perfect. Two of these, and then Valkia will have her uh, pet axes. Hmm. I might put a couple of War Shrines of Corn into the Demonetta... Or not the Demonetta army, the... Uh, uh, the Bloodletter army. Select. Alright, all that looks good. I'm almost tempted to start moving through the Endless March. Ugh, I hope this doesn't screw us. I'm gonna try this, because we need to get the additional Souls of Slanish. We want the Soul Grinders, we want the Keepers of Secrets, especially in Azazel's army. So what we'll do is... Uh, let's pick up Fiendish Following. I'd like to get a couple Fiends of Slanish into an army or two. Like so. And hopefully if we immediately at the start of next turn get Endless March, it still comes into effect and doesn't wait for the next turn, as it would be unfortunate if it does. And I do believe that's all we gotta do. So skip Path to Glory, Unassigned Skill Points, Building Upgrades Available, Commandments. Uh, exploit Vessels, I guess, if nothing else, just to be able to move faster around here. And just to double check. Yeah, okay, we're fine. End turn. Alrighty. Uh, damn it, these guys keep appearing out of nowhere. I guess that's what they do, but uh, <laughs> I'm not sure that that was a great idea. Because we know where you are now. Oh! Huh. Wait, so they set up their hidden encampments and... Oh, Kotep's back. Ooh, yes. Valkia, go chase him down. Storag core retaken. Well, that's just fine. And that is just fine indeed. The bloody hands want peace, I imagine, but what's the point when we will be forced into war with you sooner rather than later? And no other war. Alright, so before we do anything, settlement lost, yada yada yada, it's not really a settlement. The only settlements are dark fortresses. Uh, we need Endless March reset. Where are you, Endless March? E right here. Then, we want Grotesque Mechanisms reset to Bloom of Decay, and then we want Fists of Corn reset to Death's Bounty. Like so. And I guess we could do Winged Watchers something else as well. Let's get... Oh, we did Winged Watchers last time. And the other Gifts of Zinch are relatively meh. Oh, but Cockatrices are nice, so let's get a Feathered Abomination as well. Nice. Alrighty. Uh, what do we do now? Let me just see here. Oh, first of all, I want to see how far can we move? Did that still work? We can move to Vol's Anvil with you, but then we'd have to leave Hotex Column. Uh, there's this little tiny army right here. We can see you. <laughs> sort of, anyway. And A, Hat Grief has been reclaimed by the... Hmm. Okay, no, I think that's just... Ah, ah, there's an army right there, isn't there? Damn, they're gonna go for Kragroth Deep. I guess if we want to be annoying, we could uh, summon a Temp Lord right here just to guard Kragroth Deep, because then where are they going to go? In fact, we could give them the Circle of Destruction. Yeah, fine, we'll do that. Uh, any Lord that we've summoned before that's available right now? Valmir, again, it's always Valmir. You go here. And... Oh, I did want to get a Aspiring Champion, another Aspiring Champion for Siggy, who doesn't appear to have one here. Mm. It'll be a little bit of a detour for him, because I wanted him immediately to go to Kunkwata, but uh, oh, maybe not a big deal. Velmer can chase him down, so let's do that. And I also wanted to get another horseman for Valkia, but she can probably find one herself, so and that's fine. Undo that, and that should be good enough. I will, however, give you spells, just in case it devolves into an actual fight, though I somehow doubt it. Soul Blight Life Leeching, and let's do Doom and Darkness. In fact, let's double up on Doom and Darkness. And that should help in forcing the enemy to rout should they actually attack us. I don't actually remember what's here in this particular army. Anyway, Valkyrie, ah, just out of range of Kotep, are we? Hmm. I mean, we could ignore him. And we can't reach him with a Zazel. There's a decent likelihood that he goes for Clark Karond. On the other hand, if we put Valkyrie right here, he may be too tempted and try to attack her army. So, let's do that. In fact, if we put ourselves close enough to Storag Core, he might try to attack us there just by virtue of the fact that uh, uh, he gets a little bit in the way of bonus troops. So, well, let's hope so. Damn, you are so close to rank 5, but not quite there. Magicka's weakness and... 
use Surgo here. It might actually be a good idea for Valkia to have two exalted heroes in her army just to get the additional XP. As much XP as possible. Level up that a little bit quicker. Anyway, uh, Jaeger. Go right here. Is this guy gonna ambush you or does it count as an interception? Oh, we can't actually do anything about this. Huh, it's a little bit annoying. Really? Well, I wanted to move Jaeger out of there. Uh, I don't really care about these territories, though. Hmm. And you cannot adopt the ambush stance when in view of another faction's army. Huh. Yeah, I've never had enough cause to actually encounter these guys on the field that much, so it's kind of interesting to see uh, the way that they function. Oh, well, you're going to go into ambush. You're going to go right here, and you're going to spend the turn. If they retake Blacklight Tower, then we destroy them. If they don't, then, uh, well, AA your hits them. Let's also... Mm, I was going to say swap the... Oh, Venom Glade, you shouldn't have a Twisted Relic. You should have a... You should have furs. Why do you have a Twisted Relic? Huh. Oh, it might have been there when I uh, when I sent that uh, Lord to Occupied. Hmm. Okay, fine. Hmm. I'm wondering what's the best way to do this. They have how many territories left? Two. Oh, they'll be out of territories if we take both of them. Yeah, okay, fine. As I was, was going to send him down to Vol's Anvil, but we'll do this instead. You to Hotex Column. This will probably hurt our... Uh, our chariots, if we ought to resolve it, but what can you do? They're each gonna, well, just one's gonna lose a unit. Still annoying, but well, that is what it is. Uh, don't bother sacking it, I just don't care enough. Passive Eternal, pa Passive? Uh, Banner of Eternal Flame, I don't know how I got passive out of that. Don't need the Twisted Relic here, either. We can delete it. Or I guess we could just, well, I mean, it is money back. Hmm. It is something, after all. And Siggy go to the Twisted Glade, which I do believe is a walled settlement and might actually warrant a fight. Especially since... Ah, close victory, medium casualties, and these guys will die if we try to auto resolve it, which means we're going up the walls. Alrighty. I... I was about to say we should probably wait, but no. I lied. We're not waiting. We're attacking right now. Well, let's go up those walls and see how our... Uh, uh, how all the marvelous maulers uh, do. By which I mean the Chaos Warriors. Go. All right, here we go. Siggy's army has not had, let's say, too much of an opportunity to fight at walled settlements in this campaign as yet, but that is bound to change over oh, some uh, nice arrow blocking by Siggy. Though it almost makes me feel like the arrows probably shouldn't have been able to find purchase in that particular shield, but I suppose uh, that's uh, just fine. Maybe Sisters of Avalorn arrows, but not regular uh, uh, archer arrows. Anyway, we simply bum-rush the enemy settlement. We've got the breach in the wall up, and we just uh, hit the enemy as fast as we can. Our Chaos Warriors of Slanish move at 60 uh, speed now, and Siggy's at 83, so quite a bit faster than them. Um, but they're starting to catch up in terms of speed, and ooh, look at those, uh, look at those mirror guard shields glinting in the distance, and we got a few units from flying off the tower as our exalted hero moves in on his manticore, and starts menacing of those uh, high elven archers. They're not really a threat to the chaos warriors, but they could knock a few of those marauders down, and are in fact starting to, so we may as well uh, not let them do so. The mirror guard are going to peel away by themselves, they don't really need support nearly as much as as uh, some of the other units might, and we'll start facing off against the unit of Lothurn Seaguard. And everybody's nice and wet here, so, you know. It's a Slaanesh army. Anyway, uh, we got a second breach in the wall coming down, or breach in the gate, I suppose. One of the unit, uh, or uh, one of the units of Exalted, uh, or Exalted, Aspiring Champions. And our Chaos Sorcerer is moving in. Although it does look like the enemy is already beginning to focus down our Chaos Sorcerer on that uh, War Shrine. Uh, that HP is going to drop real quick if you're not careful. The, uh, the War Shrine isn't nearly as difficult to deal with when it's not a War Shrine of Nurgle healing itself. 
and especially without Nurgle spells to help you out, so and do be careful on that. A little bit of revenge for the War Shrine's damage, however, we back it up, but we give them a parting gift of a bound penumbral pendulum through the enemy ranks as we send in more Chaos Warriors to uh, stop the enemy from firing. And that's pretty much the goal for men for this particular battle. Sorry about the camera jumping around, but uh, well, it's not it's kind of inescapable in the uh, in these settlement battles. Anyway, goal simple. We move in, we have all the enemy range units engage and prevent them from firing. We also send our Marauders of Sonish into the middle of the blob here, where they're supporting all of our Chaos Warriors and applying the melee attack buff to every single one of them, so that they can all kill that much faster. Miraguard have actually gotten a little bit of support here, even though they didn't need it, and Sigvald has completely peeled away from the rest of the army to go after the enemy Archmage of Light, who is protecting much done for already there we go and I'm pretty sure the enemy archmage lost their head or perhaps buried their buried their head in the sand kind of hard to say or in the dirt rather and it looks like the enemy's white lions will try to go after Siggy uh, that's all fine White Lions may certainly be threatening with their armor sundering and their high damage, but they're not really a threat uh, to Siggy, though we do have our, uh, our Exalted Hero moving in to help out a little bit as well, and that bleed should certainly help. Anyway, uh, bounce bear is at about 70% in our favor. We still have to make our way through several lines of Spears, Archers, and Spear Archers, Lothran Seagard, I mean. But that's just fighting elves for you. And hey, we even have a few units of Hellstriders joining the fray as well. We won't be seeing too many of these in the campaign as they're just too fragile and like giants, whichever unit of Hellstriders you use, they're going to get absolutely destroyed by every auto resolve. So I'd rather not uh, keep them around for that particular reason. Honestly, I might even... I, I would normally probably avoid chariots sometimes just for that, depending on the specific type of chariot, because the autoresolve seems to hate them, and uh, has a tendency to delete their models, and then as soon as some of their models are deleted, every subsequent autoresolve deletes more models, and it's a vicious cycle. Ooh, vicious cycle. Vicious cycling. Hmm. That would be a bad name for a chariot, but anyway. Uh, the <laughs> in the meantime, the battle continues. Our Hell Striders with Hell Scourges uh, continue to work, applying their overwhelm to the enemy, though we hardly need it. And, ooh, again, some nice air on some of the archers up on top of the hill. Uh, Hudukai, the Edgelord, or Edgelord Hudukai, has arrived to help the Mirror Guard. And this is a, not a great place for the enemies to be. They are starting to run away from our units and this little river area only to meet more Slaneshi at the top of a hill. That must be a heck of a morale-breaking sight to see. A, your unit breaks in terror of the uh, Chaos Warriors here, tries to head up the hill to escape and only sees enemies cresting the hill as well. But oh well, that's the problem for the elves and and, well, their loss will be a problem to them very, very shortly, as the battle is very nearly ours. Balance Bear is at about 90%, a few more units to catch. Sigvald's still fighting, and Black himself as Edgelord Huikai just abandoned him, but Sigvald's also basically at full HP once again. He did pop his, uh, uh, he did pop his healing potion briefly, or his potion of toughness briefly. Not that he really needed it. And he's been here for pretty much the entire battle. But he's not something like Torox or Archaon or Kolek or anything like that. He's not going to mince infantry. If he has nobody to duel, he's not a particularly effective lord. But uh, he can at least keep all these units pinned in place and not really applying themselves anywhere more useful. Alright, how about our own units? Still trying to chase units down. We pop a few Melkoth's Mystifying Miasmas. I don't generally bother with the spell except for when it's needed to chase enemies down with a little bit of extra speed reduction. Not that I think that it's a horrifically bad spell in SFO, especially for, uh, for example, Draka. But, at the same time, you have much better uses for your mana in a Slaneshi army, especially when you can just repeatedly spam a Lash of Slaanesh. Or even Acquiescence for also speed, but also defense reduction. 
Again, from the lore of Slanesh. But hey, once we get Pit of Shades, uh, that will get plenty of use and occasionally Occam's Mind Razor as well. Somehow I doubt that Sigvald will ever need any support in the form of Enfeebling Foe to help him in duels. And considering his problem mincing infantry, well, uh, well, we're better off saving our spells for those lashes and like that. Anyway, it looks like the battle is pretty much ours now. The last of the enemy units are getting chased down, and in fact, the last of them will break, and the battle will be ours. I'm curious to see how much damage, or how many kills actually, not how much damage, as Sigvold got after the end of this particular battle, simply just because he spent pretty much the entire, what, seven? ish minutes standing in one spot fighting various infantry units i mean he killed the enemy lord super quickly probably even quicker than he did aletha nar but then he was uh, he was bogged down anyway All right, there we go. Got a decent monetary reward for that one, or favor reward, whatever. And it calls it a close victory, but at 34 losses, I would hardly say so. That's like 3% of our army in terms of damage. I think most of the damage was on the Chaos Sorcerer of Slanish. Gonna need a little bit more missile resistance on him, especially if we send uh, Siggy over to Ulthwan to finish uh, what Nakari started. Hmm. Although we did do pretty good in terms of damage on that uh, Chaos Sorcerer, Sorcerer of Slanesh specifically. 49,000 damage. 48989. Not bad at all. And Sigi, 11k. He did okay. I mean, he stood there fighting White Lions and I think it was a Lothurn Seaguard unit for basically the entire battle, but he has very little in the way of splash damage. He's a duelist and thus is fairly lackluster at killing or mincing infantry. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, we are going to ooh, at 3.6k it might actually be worth sacking this place and we're not going to bother subjugating these guys though i'm just going to destroy them and we'll sack it and then we'll reoccupy hmm. might stop on by and destroy death down cold eyes army just because we can't occupy that and they do still have armies but now they will have no choice most likely to move towards twisted glade or blacklight tower Somewhere. Wait, no, not Twisted Glade. Yeah, Blacklight Tower. I guess we can repair it for when we uh, transfer it to uh, uh, probably Malekith. Give him some territories, and if these guys take Blacklight Tower, Jaeger can simply destroy them. And next turn, and we'll see about Valmir and what's going on over here as well. And then transfer the Aspiring Champions, should they survive. Lovely. Alright, let's keep moving. Arkshi, you are in... Ambush stance. I genuinely don't remember why I put you in ambush stance. I think we were trying to get to. Ooh, Azag's right there. He's back. He's back again. Can we declare war on you yet, Kislev? No, one more turn. All right, nearly there. Uh, uh, is Azag's defeat trait the 10% physical resistance trait, or is that another defeat trait? Gulator. Oh my lord. Gulator's done a lot. <laughs> Uh, Green Skinner, uh, no, it's 25% spell resistance and leadership aura size. Mm, I don't think Archeon cares about the leadership aura size. I mean, there's potential for spell resistance. He's only got 20, I guess. Eh, but not a big enough deal for us to care. Either way, I think we'll pop into raiding stance for a turn and then go right here. And we need to hit Igarov and Fort Chikova as soon as we declare war on these guys. Master of Seals, you can in fact block armies. So we could try to keep Azag pinned in place. How many turns of Steel Tech do you have? Ten. That's not bad. Eh, alright, we could do block armies. Uh, do we need anything here? Anything that would help you on the field? I don't think that there is. We can go into Power Set, but not, uh, not being at rank 10, it doesn't really do much for us. And frankly, none of this helps you with your ability to do anything with this. Hey, you know what? Just keep your point. Try to block the army. And also try not to get wounded. And yeah, Kislev is basically being used as a success. He can still move reasonably far, but probably not as far as uh, he could before. All right, who's up next? Gulator. 
You probably should take Talibime, although there's a decent likelihood that we're going to have to do this manually, else our spawn get too badly damaged. At least I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. Pyrrhic victory and medium casualties and the frolicking buboniker's would die. Alright, I might do that manually real quick, and just like last time. And Galator's army has no problem with those sorts of battles. Kolak, you've got a long ways to go, my friend. But at least you're not spending, I don't know, like 15 turns doing absolutely nothing, waiting for Grimgor to respawn, so I'll take it. Next up, Kukar. Ooh, you can reach the sea lane immediately, so reach it, you shall. Go to the, uh, uh, go to the eastern colonies. Can't move everybody else until he reaches there. It's so slow, and yes, I know you can speed that up. What? I gotta be kidding me. He's... Oh, okay, for a second I thought he couldn't reach it. Like, he was like 1% away from it. And that would have been upsetting. Village, you're up next, sir. And, ooh... It looks like we've got battles for you. We've got some stuff at the Pillars of Grugni and some stuff in Mount Squighorn. I see that... Skarsnik was here before, but I no longer know where he is. Hmm. Guess we could move to Karazgarak. I did want to get Mount Gunbed first, but oh! Well, you know what, Tretch, if you can occupy Mount Gunbed without us sacking it, that would actually be really preferable. Hmm. Also, just out of curiosity, are you yet... Move you here. Are you yet able to recruit another exalted... No. Pink Horror. It's gonna take a while. I guess we could just delete you and then get you back as needed, wherever needed. Because there's not really anything that you need to recruit. Samoth is recruiting his own Iron Demon now, because he wasn't gonna wait for you. Uh, these two are gonna re get replaced by trains. These are all gonna be Chaos Warriors, since it's our undivided army. What level do we need to be to ascend you? Mm, 30. Okay, that'll take a while. But we'll get there. Uh, at least hopefully. Alright, Kagan, I think for now we're gonna let you go and then resummon you as needed. We can also probably transfer the World's Edge Archway to Tretch. Okay, we're gonna have to pay you to take it. Fine, Tretch, fine. <laughs> uh, and it wasn't even destroyed already, was it? Hmm. Well... Hopefully you actually do something useful with that. Anyway, Village, I think it's time for you to go again. Let's hit the... Uh, do we force the garrison? Uh, or do we chase after this little army? That's the question. Who do we want coming in as reinforcements? The bigger army or the smaller army? Frankly, I don't think it matters all that much. I guess if these guys escape, we'll have to... Yeah, you know what? We'll go for the Mount Squighorn instead, because otherwise it'll be a big issue with the uh, and with the Otterzel. Village, away you go. I also did give Village the Severed Claw Aspiring Champion, so this will be their debut, and it's an obnoxiously difficult-to-kill unit, so... And that should be fun. Also, before I forget, let's just transfer the high plays to these guys as well. Hopefully we don't have to pay them. Ah, we gotta pay them for it, too. Fine, Tretch, fine... There you go, enjoy. Maybe uh, make something out of those, and hopefully this will be a bigger reason for him to occupy Mount Gunbat. I hope he doesn't sack it, it's a tier 5. Maybe if we directly tell him to occupy it. I'm actually not sure that he can. But give it a shot. Alright, uh, Village. You have work to do, my friend, or at least your mutaliths and the blue scribes do. Everybody else, we shall see. Go. Alrighty, here we go. The bloody hands to make it bloodier. I uh, wasn't really expecting to ever having fought the bloody hands in this particular campaign because they're in the Badlands and probably far enough away from any areas that we would normally care about. But hey, they've conveniently moved up to the Silver Road and thus we'll have some fun with them here. And of course, Skarsnik as well. Anyway, and I'm gonna start the battle off with a nice little blue fire from uh, Mr. Village to try to damage uh, the enemy work boss. 
but otherwise they're just going to try to head towards the enemy settlement. Barrier is protecting our mutilid vortex bees for now, but we are going to wait for a few units to move in. I was actually thinking that the enemy lord would land here and we'd simply surround him and kill him with the vortex beasts and with the... Uh, uh, and uh, with the aspiring champions, the severed claw there, but it looks like he doesn't want to do that. In fact, he is vacillating. He keeps dropping down as if he's going to land and then not doing so, which uh, may actually be, if accidental, a decent move on the part of the AI because it uh, it means we have to sort of be reactionary and try to figure out where he's going to go and react to that. At least in part, preemptively. Anyway, it looks like what he's finally decided on is chasing the blue scribes around, who are going to, I don't know, flying version of Parthian shot him. Alright, and we're just going to have to keep backing away. They're not going to survive fighting an enemy orc war boss in melee. They're quite fragile as well, with only 4.5k HP. And like, I feel like I've seen Archaon drop... Yeah, I think we saw him drop somebody with from 3,000 HP in a single hit, essentially. Uh, well, we're in one of those double hits of his, and due to his animations. But I feel like uh, if he used all of his buffs as Slayer of Kings, etc., etc., he might be able to instant insta kill something like the Blue Scribes. So, yeah, they definitely have to be careful. Anyway, while the Blue Scribes are being chased, and while the enemy lord is eating Pink Fire after Pink Fire and Blue Fire, I guess as well. Uh, chasing them around, and I mean horror pink fire and horror blue fire. And the rest of our army is fighting the Severed Claw, uh, leading the charge and uh, providing support for our piles of Forsaken. Who will eventually be spawnified. I like the idea that their presence close to the Mutilith Vortex Beasts will eventually spawnify them. Too bad that we can't then turn the spawn into Mutilith Vortex Beasts, but I think two is sufficient. Keep in mind that mutilits are... Uh, you can be turned... Uh, you, 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 mutilits are basically spawn. You can be turned into one just like you can be turned into a spawn, so... Yeah. <laughs> They're a little bit fancier, uh, but uh, it does make sense in the sense that we could most definitely uh, turn the uh, Forsaken into mutilits and uh, justify it in that manner. Anyway, the mutilits and the spawn of the Forsaken will continue charge for it. It almost makes me want to keep a few Forsaken in this army, but nonetheless I feel like the uh, Chaos uh, Warriors of Zinch and or Aspiring Champions will serve us better. But the rest of the army will continue marching marching their way forward, or bounding forward. Cockatrice has landed as well, mostly because we needed to end the blob to provide the melee defense and attack the debuff aura that it provides, which is quite nice. Petrifying gaze is uh, minus 15, minus 15, and a little bit of speed reduction as well, which I guess we wouldn't complain about. It looks like the enemy lord has either escaped to war. No, he's been brought down finally by the uh, pink and blue horror fires. And now uh, all those units are able to start moving into the settlement to provide fiery, flashy, fiery support. Very nice. It's nice to see the uh, blue fires and the pink fires and the exalted pink fires as sort of working together. Oh, lots and lots of fireworks. If only we had some salamanders to add to this, just because they look like fireworks as well. And I'm sure Zinch would appreciate them with all of their fire as well. Almost surprising he doesn't have, uh, or Zinch doesn't have a sort of equivalent unit. Anyway, we're gonna send in a unit of Marauders of Zinch to block off the pink and blue horrors from getting attacked. Uh, gotta be careful about killing all of our own Marauders off of those pink fires, but uh, this little portion of our army should be able to hold and do its thing while the rest takes the enemy settlement. I do believe the blue scribes are also flying around up here somewhere. I've lost sight of them at this point. Oh, there they are, sort of hovering overhead. And periodically dropping spells. They're up to four, uh, they're up to 463 kills and 46,000 damage. It's kind of hard to uh, spot exactly when each cast goes down, so... I'm just sort of watching the uh, rest of the army, uh, rather than the scribes. And there we go, they're gonna pop a blade wind, finally caught one, uh, right into the middle of this enemy blob, and it's gonna delete, like, two or three units. 
I don't think that one was overcast, but it does delete this nasty Skulker unit and have the HP from three units. So certainly worth a, I believe, eight mana for a non-overcast blade wind. Not too bad. All right, well, more and more of the bloody hands are uh, fighting their way forward to uh, continue to fight us. Our mulets are perfectly fine by the looks of it in terms of their HP, and even if they weren't, then we can just drop uh, uh, either fleshy abundant wait, wait, or... I forget if we have the Lure of Nurgle on you already. Uh, we can at least uh, drop a regrowth and earth blood on you. As needed. Although, frankly, a decent amount of the time we actually need to save those spells for the blue scribes because they are so fragile now that they need healing. It's really too bad that we haven't found more crowns of everlasting glory. We've given our single one to Kolek, but honestly, if we had more, every single uh, demon and big target I would give one to. I mean, it's a regenerating item, so that's just fantastic. Haven't had a too great luck with finding those. I think we've. I think I had several of them in my Valkia campaign, uh, from what I recall. And I do remember it made one of the uh, one of the demon princes of Corn quite a lot more difficult to kill, especially when combined with all that uh, with all those resistances. And man, on a demon prince of Nurgle, that must just be insane. Must just be insane. Especially if you can luck into that uh, regenerative trait that uh, some uh, some units get, or path of uh, path of glory, or whatever they're called. Anyway, more enemies continue to move their way down. I mean, it's orcs. There's always going to be more uh, green skins to kill. Though the balance of power has started to shift in our favor. The fight continues over on this side as well, and it looks like at the very least our marauders are uh, having a little bit of a bad day. Several of them having taken quite a lot of damage, though as to whether the damage was from the enemy or from our own pink fires, uh, hard to say. Anyway, I'm moving in the cockatrice to help out a... <laughs> uh, the little dives from the cockatrice always make me laugh. Uh, moving in the cockatrice to help out here, especially if our units of marauders have to be in the melee, we'll need the uh, debuffs that the cockatrice provides to make sure that they don't get ripped apart. And plus a single entity to hold the enemy back somewhat and uh, sort of anchor the line is always nice to have. Especially when this particular faction, these orcs don't have enough uh, range uh, to sort of threaten our single entities, especially compared to uh, plenty of other factions. Anyway, uh, blue fires dropping upon the enemy. We're going to send our marauders back as they are shaken and badly damaged and allow them to recover their, uh, uh, their barrier while we send in our chaos sorcerer and our cockatrice together to hold the enemies back and allow our range units to do their work. Now, of course, both the blue horrors and the... Well, I guess all the horrors can still fight in melee. Not great, mind you, but well enough. And so they should be able to hold the enemy off. Uh, speaking of, it looks like that particular or those particular units of enemy orc boys are done. We are still attempting to make our way up the skill with the village, and yeah, a reasonably lengthy battle this time around. Very nice. And uh, any uh, any more action or any additional action for the Mutalith Vortex Beasts is a-okay by me. As they're just so fun to watch. It's just too bad that we couldn't uh, we couldn't build a Jabber Slife from Malagor, or, well, any Beastmen, really. Because they don't technically have access to them. Uh, well, the AI doesn't really have access to them. Or the AI doesn't have the ability to build them directly. And due to the Dread system... Which is unfortunate, what can you do? I just think that the Jabber Slates would work really nicely in here, but hey, the weird spawn working together with the uh, uh, Mutilates and soon the little tiny spawn that are going to be in here as well are going to be just fine. I just hope that the little smaller spawn of Zinch don't uh, get too in the way of the uh, of the Mutilates and while well, everybody getting in the way of each other. And there we go, we got a wall of fire coming down upon the enemy here, moving through a fairly big amount of units. I absolutely love this spell because it's ridiculously cheap for how effective it is, especially uh, against the AI. 
And uh, yeah, I absolutely, uh, I absolutely spammed that spell on Jishu, who was our, uh, uh, who was our uh, legendary uh, dragon-blooded Shugengen lord from my UN bow campaign. I don't remember to enter her into the uh, annals of history, the uh, the community canon, as it were. With all of our other legendary characters. Alrighty, well, we continue making our way forward, and speaking of Cafe, we got more Cafe spells coming down. Coolest looking spell in the game, Talons of Night, absolutely wrecking face. Oh my lord. <laughs> That's a real bloody. Enemies trying to escape, only for those Talons of Night to uh, come out of the ground and uh, grasp them. And it looks like with that, the battle is ours, the Talons of Night uh, clinch the win for us, and the rest of the enemy will shatter, we'll give a little bit of a chase to them because some of the enemy units did arrive here from outside so there may be value to doing so uh, but oh my lord Okay, well, we're going to rack up a few more kills in the Blue Scribes as the enemy runs another one of those uh, pink uh, fire, or pink fires, uh, another one of those uh, walls of fires and another wall of fire, or possibly the same one. Anyway. Ooh, alrighty. Well, that was pretty gloriously Zinchi, if I do say so myself. 5.2k works absolutely. I'm obliterated around 500 kills a piece on each of the Mutilith Vortex beasts. Very, very nice. 68k damage and 8182k on the two of those. The Blue Scribes, 170,000, 171,000 damage and 1,643 kills. Not quite matching the record set by Grotzlik Gitstampa in the uh, in the Grimgor campaign, but getting there. Though Grotzlik was a mere regular character uh so yeah hmm. perhaps uh, the blue scribes need to start using foot of gork in order to rack up those kind of numbers but anyway uh funnily enough the blue scribes seem to be outshining village a little bit a because village is a very slow lord and it's difficult for him to actually get in combat and b most of the mana that we use we're saving for the blue scribes to do their nonsense and not for village to spam blue fire primarily mostly we'll probably be using him to cast treason of zinch and while the other stuff and goes to the blue scribes and if we need an infernal gate or something specific then we can use a, a village perhaps and at the same time the blue scribes are so strong it may behoove us to actually separate village's army into two armies instead but i'll think about it I do like it in its current form as well. Anyway, uh, 15,000 gold, a very nice reward for our trouble. I don't think we... Well, it is free XP. Yeah, fine, sack it. If nothing else, sacking is worth the uh, worth it for the XP, and it's not like we're immediately going to trade this to somebody anyway. Income from sacking settlements increase. Yeah, it's not so much for the income. Uh, cultist for village, though he hardly needs one. Uh, you can move to Mount Squighorn and occupy it, and we'll see if we get attacked by Skarsnik. And though it seems like he ran away, or possibly he attacked Karazakarak and died. I don't see Thorgrim Grudgebearer here anymore, and I did see him there earlier, which means, uh, well, he went somewhere. Anyway, uh, let's see what else we got to do this turn. Jaeger, you're waiting for these guys to stop that. Uh, <laughs> Malefix, uh, you will probably need to land at Bay Chai to heal, unless you can heal in Blue River. Now, doesn't look like it. Alright, that's fine. Uh, just land, heal for a turn or two, and then move back out to the shipwreck. Might get him a few more troops here, just because he'll uh, he'll get a little bit more auto-resolve advantage out of it, and we might as well channel while we're here as well. Yeah, somebody suggested we give him one of each type of greater demon, which may also be something that we do. I'll think about it. I mean, I was going to get rid of these two chaos trolls anyway, so it's not the worst idea in the world. Get him for greater demons, maybe a war shrine of Nurgle, as well, this isn't really a Nurgly army, it's more Nurgly than anything else due to the Lord and the exalted hero and being of the Nurgular variety. 
Although I suppose if we keep this guy mortal, then he can stand a Chaos War Shrine, and we could Demon Prince up this guy instead. Hmm. They're both options. And I'm not entirely sure which I'll pick. But anyway, let's continue. Uh, speaking of... Oh, well, we were supposed to go down here anyway. Uh, you guys. Well, you will need those soul grinders, but we'll get them in the... Uh, we'll get them in here later on. I guess we'll have to wait until next turn to... Yeah, we'll have to wait until next turn. That's fine, that's fine. You got a ways to travel anyway. Go through allied territory here. Chant, you need to keep picking up horsemen, because you're going to need so many. And... And away you go. All the way up to the canal, sir. And there should be horsemen in the Black Fortress, right? Right, game? Yeah, there's one. Why is it only one? I think we've seen a few places where there were three. Number of type of units, blah, 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 likely to be found in frozen climates. Oh, that's why we can't find any here. Well, <laughs> that's unfortunate. But you know what? I think six might be sufficient. Because uh, we'll want... Well, actually, we probably won't necessarily need a sorcerer. We'll need an exalted hero in here, which will put us up to 10 units. And then two more, three more, if we count the uh, Knights of Immolation. Hmm. That'll put us, up, put us up to 13, 14 with the Golden Griffin of Theurgy. And then whatever other units we can get from gifts, whether they be additional Lords of Change, some Cockatrices, maybe some, uh, uh, maybe some Screamers. That we could probably get Screamers from one of our allies instead. Well, our ally. Yeah, our only Zinch ally is a little bit uh, stretched thin, as various armies need to recruit uh, and recruit units from them. But what can you do? Anyway, uh, Samoth Painbringer, you're stuck where you are for a turn until you get your Iron Demon Dimahar. You are stuck where you are until we've got more troops joining us over here. Valkia, you are good to wait on Grand Hierophant Katep. Who will hit you, hopefully, the next turn? And the only thing that remains to do, I think, this time is this little mini battle for Gulatar. You know what, I think what I'll do is I'll do this battle between the episodes. This is obviously a waste of our time. I'll do it off screen and I'll end the episode here next time. We will start off with this battle being done and ready to end the turn. And just to complete some admin, I might even end the turn between the episodes just so that uh, I can do the admin for both turns. Yeah, that might be the way to do it. Anyway, anyway, I'm going to call it here. Next time, Village will advance uh, through these territories. It looks like the Crooked Moon are pretty much done and will probably declare war on Clan Verms and on Karazakarak fairly quickly, probably to vassalize Verms, but to destroy Karazakarak. I'll think about whether we want to vassalize the Disciples of the Maw. Maybe they're sufficiently built up so as to where we can actually get a few uh, decent units from them. And well, 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 it looks like a battle for um, Chant here will be a little bit closer than I thought. You know what? We'll probably get him a couple of uh, uh, a couple of Soul Grinders of Nurgle and just head him towards King Senefret next turn then. Yeah. Uh, we won't have to wait as long. I mean, I was going to head him to Nagash's or we could loop back around uh, this way. Looks like some fun battles ahead as we've still got to try out a bunch of army types and continue building our current ones up, as well as declare war on Kislev and Throg and Vlad. So more fun uh, chaos times to come. So stay tuned. Don't forget to leave those likes and comments below, especially to Threshold if you're into that sort of thing. All glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.